I'm talking uh, this afternoon to Lisa Garrard, principal at St Bernard's at um, Dundas. What about what was it about your leadership? What you did um, that that got you through, but particularly just about 2020. I guess the first thing is to, upon reflecting on that, you know, you just you're in it at, at the time and you don't have much time to think and about what you're doing. So you just, I found that we just had to keep the kids in the forefront of our minds, keep the learning in the forefront of our minds and just keep the community in our minds, you know, because we know there was a lot of angst out there around what was happening. So I think for us and myself, I had to kind of be the face of calm and I I had to, regardless of what else was going on, I had to try and be that face of calm. So when I, you know, had parents saying, what's happening, what's going on, what's the school doing? Mm -hmm. Um, we just had to just keep that calmness and just keep that serenity around us while still, you know, making sure that the kids were catered for, making sure that um, the staff were looked after. And, and so I guess that for me was one of the things that I had to just be the face of face of calm out into the community for them. Uh, <laughs> an excellent point. But besides being a part on the day-to-day realities of leading yes. the school... Well, I think what, that, what challenges were there for your leadership? Um, I think the first thing was is going from face to face learning definitely to, to a digital platform. Um, what within a really short space of time was something that we had to manage very well and just make sure that that was done well so that we weren't playing catch up later on. So we had to sit down as a team and really think about how that was going to happen and how we were going to roll that out. We had we had digital platforms in place, but for the little ones, um, that was the challenge, I think, just to sort of see what was going to work best for them and what was going to be manageable at a staff level too because everybody has different um, capabilities around the use of technology. So we had to make sure that it was going to be, one, maintained well and, two, that was going to be purposeful. So that, that was a day-to-day challenge and how we sort of did that was um, we sort of put in a, a blanket, you know, so this year to that year, use Google Classroom. So we made sure that the staff was upskilled on how to use that, made sure that, you know, we had very clear guidelines and expectations about what we would put up there and what was going to happen and how that was going to be managed just so that it would remain, you know, sort of consistent. And with the little ones, we um, put a a digital, we put Edmodo in place um, and that was easy. It was easy to use, easy for the little ones to access, easy to use and easy for the parents to access on their behalf as well. So just, you know, having those conversations with staff around what, how it was going to be managed. And I know my, um, Jackie, my AP and myself were very hands-on in those times as well to make sure that we, were assisting with that management of the, the digital platforms as well. And I guess the next challenge was around who had devices and who didn't. We mm-hmm. are a community where not everybody has an access to a device. So we had mm-hmm. to put um, systems in place where we would loan devices to families so that they did have that opportunity, especially when we were in you know lockdown, um, and just give them the opportunity to you know, access a device from home so that they could access, you know, the online learning. And we had many rosters in place to cater for those kids who would have needed to come on site. We have a few um, defence families and, um, you know, essential workers. And so we just had to maintain the learning for those children as well. So mm. lots, lots of things in place. <laughs> what so what do you think? Did you have to do anything different in 2020 uh, as a leader of that community than you did previously? Um, I think there was more um, one-on-one sort of touching base with families. Um, Mm. Definitely sort of if we noticed that there were children who weren't accessing the digital platform or that, you know, we hadn't heard from for a little while, we would just keep in touch with those Um, children we had to learn how to do things a bit differently you know like teaching the kids how to use zoom to have to try and maintain we had the teachers were doing reading groups via zoom they were doing you know inquiry via zoom so we had to sort of learn how to do that ourselves 
and then teach the kids how to do that. So that's that's very, that's was very different. Um, I guess there's some of the things that I don't want to lose. Some of those good practices mm-hmm. that we had in place, um, we're making you know sort of really a big effort to try and keep those in place. Um, mm-hmm. So and just you know staffing because we could only have you know some staff working from home, some staff on site, and Zoom was a great way to sort of keep everybody you know, in touch with with each other and um, keep the learning going and the communication going. Yeah. Well, look, um, as you sort of sit here nearly midway through uh, 2021 and all that's a memory, um, reflecting back on it, Lisa, uh, what did you learn about leading, do you think, during that um, um, extraordinary experience? I suppose there are a couple of things. I sort of started to take a few notes, you know, and I, I've written a few tips for myself. Um, and one of the things was my biggest thing was to be flexible. Just to be flexible, you may come in with your agenda of what, you know, what you're going to achieve in the day, and we all know that can go pear-shaped. So just to sort of accept that <laughs> and um, to be okay with that because I think sometimes as teachers we're a little bit controlling and we like to have our agenda and we like to get through our to-do list. But um, I just found that being flexible just gave me a little bit more licence to if I had, you know, a parent coming in and being very upset about their loss of job or their inability to pay fees or, you know, things like that, that I had the time for them and that was okay. If I didn't get that paperwork done today, it'd still be there for me tomorrow. So to be flexible. And the other thing that I just had is to have faith in the people around me, you know, the, to trust the staff as being professionals, to trust, you know, the people that were giving us the advice, yeah. that trust them and just have faith in them. Um, yeah. And to be one of the things that I've really tried to do, and this sort of came out of that Flourish program that I did as well, was to be an active listener. So mm-hmm. if someone came in and they really needed my time, everything else shut down, move away, and I was theirs for that amount of time. And I still continue to do that. Like if I have people that come in and see me, I make sure that I stop what I'm doing and, and have time for them. Um, and the check-ins, we've continued on with the check-ins with, you know, children who we notice that have been away for, you know, a couple of days. The staff now are in that habit and, I, and we're in the habit of just sort of checking in, making sure everyone's okay. And so that's something we'll continue to do, whereas we may not have done that. Um, and I always say, this is, this is my last tip to myself, is to put my money where my mouth is and to really... Um, Because we had, you know, we had a kindergarten class who lost, you know, six months of learning basically. So being a teacher trained myself, I had to think, okay, in a small school you don't always have the resources that you need to cater to those. So I thought, well, here's here's a person, I'm trained in reading recovery, I'm, you know, I can go, I went into the classroom and I worked with those kindergarten children and that's something that I've maintained um, I go in there four days a week for their literacy block and it keeps me connected with the kids. It keeps their learning happening and it just, you know, something that I thought, well, I'm not going to sit back and say, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. I needed to show up myself. That's, that is a brilliant way to finish, can I say? And thanks very <laughs> much. Um, you know, the word that keeps coming up in the 20 or so of these I've done, so done is always the word trust. Mm. So... Uh, um, if we can continue on down that path, it'll help us meet whatever 2021 throws at us. And, and that's the thing, to, to sit back and look at, to sit back and reflect on, as a star on the amazing things that they did in that brief amount of time, I couldn't have asked for anyone, any group of people to work harder, to have more um, love for the kids, really, and mm. more dedication to their job. They just got in there. They did what they needed to do for the kids. And you can't ask for more than that. Well, thanks very much for your time. My pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your day.